À la claire fontaine, m'en allant promener, j'ai trouvé l'eau si belle que je m'y suis baigné. Il y a longtemps que je t'aime, jamais je ne t'oublierai. Sur la plus haute branche, un rossigne chantait. Chante, rossigne, chante-toi qui a le cœur qui Il y a longtemps que je t'aime, jamais je ne t'oublierai. Hi, welcome to episode 39 of The Gentle Knitter. My name is Nicole and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario, where I live with my husband Mark and our sweet greyhound Marcel. Today is May 12th and I'm so excited to finally get a chance to sit down and catch up with you. I have a lot to show you today. Um, I hope you're doing well. Here uh, in Ontario, we are still in full lockdown. Um, the rates, the COVID rates are really high still here uh, in Ottawa, and we have a lot of variants. So unfortunately, um, we are still required to stay at home. Um, we can only leave the house to get food, to um, get uh, to go to medical appointments or to get fresh air. So, um, but you know what, we are super lucky because we can work from home, both Mark and I, and um, we have, we're both uh, homebodies anyway, and uh, I, I just feel incredibly lucky that I have a, a home that is um, really, you know, that I love being in and, uh, you know, that uh, I have a, a happy and healthy um home life because I know it's not true for everybody and uh, so I feel really lucky about that. Um, I also feel super lucky because we are scheduled to get our first dose of the vaccine this weekend and um, I can't tell you how excited I am about that. Um, you know, even though I'm introverted and I, I'm pretty happy to stay at home and to just kind of <laughs> stay in my little cocoon, um, I can't wait to visit friends, to visit family, and uh, the vaccine means that uh, once we're fully vaccinated, we will be able to, and once they lift the stay-at-home order, of course, we will be able to visit our families and so see my parents and Mark's parents um, and uh, our siblings. And hopefully, 
in the not too distant future, we can travel and uh, I can't wait to go to a fiber festival and see all of you and give you hugs and chocolate. <laughs> um, that's just uh, sounds like a dream right now, but um, it is it is going to happen. It just we just have to hold on and be patient uh, a little while longer. But uh, yeah, other than that, things are good. And uh, you know, it, I've had a lot a lot of time to knit, so that's that's always a bonus, of course. Uh, so why don't we jump on into the knitting content? what am I wearing? I showed you the very beginnings of the shawl on my last episode. It's uh, Pearl Soho's half and half wrap and I was inspired to knit this by the Caddy Jack's Knits podcast. Um, Jackie and Caitlin have knit several of these shawls and have inspired so many people to uh, knit their own. It's such a beautiful shawl and it really is a special project that I encourage you to consider knitting because um, the knitting of it in itself is just so peaceful and so comforting. And then at the end you have this garment that is so delicious <laughs> and comforting. Um, Amy Palco of A Meaningful Stitch calls uh, the shawl a, it's like a knitted hug and it really, really feels that way. Um, so uh, Caddy Jacks, they, uh, they have a cal right now and um, uh, so lots and lots of people are knitting it and um, the, the sort of end goal of the cal is that we would all wear uh, our half and half wraps at Rhinebeck and all meet up. And, um, you know, it would be amazing if that were to happen this fall. I don't know if it will, but um, if not this year, uh, certainly next year. And um, so, yes, thank you. Thank you, ladies, for the inspiration for this uh, garment. Uh, as I mentioned, the knitting of it is, is just so heavenly and so easy. Um, the, the shawl itself is basically a giant uh, square of garter. And uh, you do one half and then the other. And it's basically all short rows but um, really, really easy. Don't let the short rowness of it scare you. Um, what I encourage you to do is check out, uh, so Jackie of Caddy Jacks has done a tutorial on how to do, uh, how to use short row, uh, German short rows to do the shawl. And uh, the pattern doesn't call for German short rows, it calls for regular short rows, but I really, really highly recommend German short rows. They are so easy to do. You don't need any implement and um, you're just basically sort of creating that wrap just by, um, by tugging on one of the stitches and turning your work. And they're super easy to resolve once, you, um, once you've done all the short rows and I really feel like they are like the tidiest short rows, uh, to my eye anyway. Um, so each stitch is worked as a short row. And uh, so it just creates this beautiful uh, line here. And uh, when you wear the shawl, you can fold it. I like to fold it um, and just slightly uh, stagger it so that your uh, other color is showing at the bottom. So I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> um, but uh, I like to wrap it around myself and uh, kind of uh, have a shorter end here and a longer end here, and then just basically do, um, do a wrap like that. 
and I mean it's just it's glorious it's so so beautiful um, apart from doing German short rows I did one other modification uh, it was based on another beautiful knitter and podcaster uh, Leslie of um, a friend to knit a friend to knit with and she um, did a three like a slipped stitch border but doing um, slipping three stitches and so basically you knit to the end of your row and then you bring the yarn forward and slip the last three stitches and then when you turn your work you just work your stitches normally and what that does is it creates kind of like an i-cord edge and so it's very very beautiful and very tidy and uh, i just i absolutely love the kind of the finishing of that so thank you leslie for that tip um what else can i say the yarn so uh the pattern calls for uh pearl soho's linen quill yarn which I will talk about very shortly. <laughs> uh, but for this one, I did go into my stash. And so the beautiful blushy pink, just a little blown out here. Um, it is a Bleu Poussière yarn. And it is her noble base in the Roseanne colorway. Uh, it's dyed, it's naturally dyed with matter and the, uh, the mix of fiber is super decadent. It's 70% um, baby alpaca, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. So you can just imagine it's, it's to die for. And then the gray color is another very beautiful yarn. This one is uh, the fiber company Meadow. And it is a, uh, a blend of baby llama, silk linen, and merino wool. So it's a little bit closer to the linen quill because it has that linen content. Uh, the color is the bed straw color. And you can, I don't know if you'll be able to see, there are uh, little linen fibers in the yarn. It's, it's really, it's a beautiful yarn. So those are, uh, those are the, the yarns that I used and again I, I couldn't recommend this pattern enough um, as soon as I cast it off I wanted to knit another one and so I did uh, order some of the original uh, yarn so holding it in my stunning Boku bag uh, you know I love Aruna's beautiful work I think this is called the Veld pattern uh, so I'm knitting a second uh, half and half wrap and of course it's uh, <laughs> in the middle of a row which is not recommended but whatever. So this yarn is the uh, Pearl Soho Linen Quill and uh, so I'm kind of going completely like this one is very very light and pale my second one is going to be very dark and moody and so i'm using um the color is called kettle black and here you can really see the um, the linen fibers so all the whitish beige um, fibers you see here they that's the linen and then the rest of the wool is uh, 35 percent alpaca and 50% uh, fine highland wool. And this yarn is amazing. I love this yarn. Uh, so that's kettle black. And then the second color I'm using is called dark denim. And so it is uh, a little darker in real life than what it's showing. But I wanted um, I wanted a piece that is completely 
utilitarian every day and I realize that I wear I wear a ton of black, I wear a ton of blue, and I often wear them together. I really uh, I know it's 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 uh, slightly uncommon, but I love wearing dark black and dark blue together, or dark charcoal gray. And uh, I've seen a few pieces. Um, that were uh, Japanese like clothing and that mix black and blue and I've always loved the look of that so I really am excited for this piece I think it will just be the kind of thing that you could wear every single day like super utilitarian um, the reason why I love this yarn it's just got a lot of body from the from the linen and a lot of softness from the alpaca and the wool and I don't know like this one is beautiful but it's very drapey because it has a lot more alpaca in it and a little heavy and it feels very delicate like I've already um, caught it on things where like I've pulled um, some threads and had to sort of re like kind of you know tuck them back in and um I just I feel yeah it's um it's very very hot and it's a little heavy it, it's heavenly I love it but this one's gonna be springier lighter um hardier but still like very soft and and very lofty like very squishy and I don't know I I don't know what it is but this yarn I am completely obsessed with and I would love to knit a ton of things in this yarn it comes in I don't know some like 60 colors it comes in a million different colors it comes in some beautiful like very soft and muted colors and then some stunning like super rich jewel tones and um, if you go to uh, if you look at either on Ravelry um, or um, on Instagram you could uh, look up you know the half and half uh, hashtag and see the combos the color combos that people have done are so interesting and um uh, there's a, a knitter that i follow her name is uh, debbie korb i actually um got to know her well i i found out about her through uh, the caddy jacks knits podcast and she uh, loves to wear very bright, um, vibrant colors. She has an incredible sense of style. And she is knit one that's like hot pink and orange. And it's so beautiful. I, <laughs> I really, I really struggle with, uh, sometimes I really, really want to knit with uh, super vibrant colors like that. And uh, I'll even kind of dip my toe into it and pull some brighter yarn out and start projects. Uh, you might have noticed if you follow me on Instagram that I, I posted recently that I was in a color mood and I started up this like bright purple sweater and, and I don't know, I really, <laughs> I so quickly lose steam on those and just feel even though I love them and I find it so fun and so invigorating, I just, when I'm knitting, I just want to be in this like pale, subtle, <laughs> neutral zone. It's just, that's just me. And, you know, uh, I reserve the right to change my mind, but uh, I think that for a while yet, I, I'm probably... Um, I'm probably going to continue in my <laughs> my neutral soft vein but anyway half and half are up highly recommend it uh, if you couldn't tell um and uh yeah i'll uh I'll, I'll update you on that next time i'm gonna take this one off because it's very warm um but it's 
it's oh, heavenly. Another thing that I just finished and I'm super excited about is uh, the Mystic Box Top. And <laughs> uh, I'll insert a photo or a couple of photos of me wearing it because it's uh, right, you know, when I hold it up, it really just looks like a, a giant knit rectangle, but it's super cute. So this uh, really fun design is uh, designed by uh, James uh, N. Watts and it's a modular knit. So you, you're basically knitting uh, these kind of strips and then picking up stitches and then connecting these squares and rectangles together to make a top. And it's designed to use long changing uh, color or long color repeat yarn. So I've used Noro uh, Kurayon, which uh, is a yarn. I This particular yarn I've had in my stash for maybe 15, 20 years. I've been a long, long time fan of uh, Noro. Again, speaking about uh, bright colors and things that I just find so beautiful, they do uh, color so, so well. But of course, I have <laughs> the most neutral, uncolorful Noro in my stash, but it, it's so beautiful. Um, the number of the color is, I think it's 201 or 211, um, I, my notebook, uh, I'll put up on the screen, but, uh, what a fun knit. It took no time at all. Uh, Kurian is, um, uh, I think it's listed as a worsted, but the one that I have, I really feel is a lot more Aaron. I did have to uh, go down in uh, needle size to get gauge. I made a few modifications. I should mention that this was a test knit and the pattern is actually being released this Friday, uh, the 15th, I believe. And um, I made uh, an accidental modification. So the pattern has some neck shaping um, and but you're supposed to do it on both pieces so you knit the front and the back they are identical uh, so you're knitting two kind of modular pieces that you then uh, sew together and uh, so I knit the front and then uh, when I knit my second block the back I forgot to do the uh, the neck shaping Actually, this really turned out for me because I uh, like to have a higher neck. I have a bit of a um, kind of a bump uh, on my on my neck, and so I like to have that extra fabric to cover uh, cover my neck. The I think James like the styling is meant to be this like very open necked thing that would you would have that extra room in the back and it, it looks really great uh, the way he's designed it um, but I like I said I forgot and I was like oh I'm not ripping it out and actually I really like the way it fits me um, yeah the pattern is super well written it's so easy to follow even though you're knitting in all kinds of directions and you're picking up a bunch of stitches the way he's got the schematics it's very, very easy to follow and um, it, it's really, I, I really recommend this pattern um, as it's just so fun and it's just a lovely layering piece. I think it looks super cute with a linen dress. So uh, yay, I'm drinking um, my favorite tea I talked about couple episodes ago. It's uh, Shepherd's Tea by the Spartan Table on Etsy. And it's, um, it's a wild herb that grows, um, that grows, I, I mean, this one was from Greece. I think it's uh, found in different places, but it's a really, really lovely tea, very uh, herbaceous. It has a um, 
to me it tastes like kind of thyme, rosemary, oregano, um, but really, really comforting and refreshing at the same time. In my gorgeous uh, Laura Shepherd mug, Laura is a ceramicist here in the area and uh, she does beautiful work. She has, I've talked about her many times, I have lots of her ceramic buttons and uh, I didn't check to see if she has any, any in her Etsy shop, but I will put the link below and you can check that out. Um, do I have any other finished objects? Oh yes, I have two hats, which you might have seen on my Instagram account. The first hat, uh, I think I showed it in progress on my last episode. It's the Mauna hat by uh, Layla Raven. It's a beautiful pattern that is part of a collection that she has designed with um, a low, uh, Aroha Knits, uh, Frenchie, Francoise, and um, it's a collection of patterns uh, that are that are kind of being released uh, over time. This was the first pattern, and uh, the second pattern um, set of patterns, I should say, has have just dropped. The most gorgeous shawl patterns, they are definitely in my queue. But uh, anyway, this lovely, lovely hat I knit with stash yarn, very deep stash. I think the the pale um, sort of turquoise uh, color is, um, it was probably fleece artist. And then the bay, the brown is, I think is, Estelle, Eco, Andean, something or other. But uh, I love this Latvian braid and the simple, uh, really beautiful graphic design. Um, I wanted to show you the inside of my hat because I was, um, I wanted to uh, say that when I work color work, I often will not catch my floats. If you can see here, there's some very, very long floats here, probably like 12 stitches. And if, uh, if I'm knitting mittens or something where like I'm putting my hand in and I've got rings on and I, I really don't want if the yarn is fragile, then yes, I will catch longer floats. But a hat is not something that, I mean, it's just going on my head. And, you know, my head is just soft hair. So I don't really feel the need to catch my floats. Uh, for those of you who may not know, when you work color work, oftentimes it's recommended that if you have a long uh, series of, um, if there's a long gap between where you've worked a certain color, then you would, at somewhere in the middle here, you would catch the yarn behind your work. There's tons of videos online that can show you how that's done. And so it, it's recommended to do that. And, and I agree with that recommendation in general. But the problem with doing that is that sometimes that color, when you catch it, can sort of peek through a little bit, especially when you have a lot of contrast between, um, between the colors. And so when, um, when I don't need to, I won't catch my floats just results in a slightly more sort of even fabric and it's a lot faster to do. You're not like kind of having to catch the floats. So I just thought I would mention that you can break the rules. <laughs> I like breaking rules sometimes. The other hat I knit is uh, a really wonderful, cozy, cozy, uh, pattern by uh, Metal Melody Hoffman of uh, uh, Bee Mandarines. And um, I knit it in uh, Nutiden, the, um, the yarn that's produced by Anna Oke 
in the Oxalis colorway. I've talked about Nutid in a bunch of times. It's a nun spun uh, single strand uh, yarn that is produced in Sweden and is really, really gorgeous. And so I held that double with uh, lichen and lace marshmallow hair. Uh, so the, uh, I think I mentioned it already, the Nutidin is the Oxalis, the marshmallow hair is in the rosewood colorway. And I will insert photos of me wearing the hats because I have my braids so I can't really put them on, but let's look at photos of me wearing these hats. This one, I love the shaping that Melody has done at the top. It fits really, really beautifully and it's very, very light, as you can imagine. An unspun yarn plus a silk mohair yarn, it's, it weighs nothing, but it's extremely warm. And uh, so, yeah, this was kind of one of the things I knit in my, I wanna wear, knit and wear color phase but I love this color and I do feel like it goes beautifully with with my charcoals and my blacks and my navy blues and my you know grays and stuff so so it's it's good to have pops of color and I and I do agree I mean people often say that bright colors look good on me and I I agree with that but I think for me it's kind of pops and accessories is probably uh, where my uh, my preferences lie when it comes to brighter colors or more saturated colors. Works in progress. Well, uh, I've got the half and half wrap, which I've shown you. Um, I also am working on a scarf. I'm holding it in a beautiful project bag I recently acquired from a company called Wool and Nature and uh, Claire lives in France and she does something I've never seen before and I just think is so beautiful she prints with uh, natural dyes and so everything on the bag is naturally dyed the cord the um, the all the fabrics and then this design is printed with with natural dye and I just really think it's so beautiful. Claire is very talented. She actually sent a few uh, like a little you know thank you card and this is her beautiful art. I think she offers. Um, I don't know if it's this design, but she has like tea towels and prints that you can order that have her art on it. And um, yeah, she's, wow, super, super talented. Speaking of talented, uh, so the designer of the scarf I'm knitting is uh, Tyne Swedish. Uh, she is a clever stitch on Instagram and uh, she has just started uh, a new Patreon. So if you like uh, Tyne's work and you want to encourage her, um, check out her, uh, her Instagram. Uh, she has a link tree to, uh, to all of her different endeavors, including her Patreon. So I'm knitting a scarf. And not much to look at for now. Uh, this is a provisional cast on, but um, it's all done in twisted rib. Everything is twisted, so the knits and the pearls. And uh, as you work, uh, it's a three color um, scarf. And so here's uh, the first color I'm using. Um, this will be the second color. I'm not sure it'll be in this order, but anyway, this is the third color. So super subtle, like about as subtle as you can get. But I think this will be so beautiful and so luxurious looking. It, um, the yarn I'm using is, um, is Blue Sky Fiber. 
and it's their sport weight so it's 100 percent baby alpaca i'm not sure if they still have this um this base it's uh one that i bought when they were still um called a blue sky alpaca it's a very beautiful super soft yarn unfortunately it does hurt my hands a little bit to work on it so every day i do maybe 10 rows and then I put it down. So this is gonna be a bit of a long haul knit, but that's okay by me. The fiber is so beautiful and the pattern is lovely. So I'm happy to spend some extra time with, uh, with this project. The last work in progress that I have is another uh, another project that I can blame uh, Caddy Jacks on. So maybe uh, I'll call this episode Caddy Jacks Made Me Do It. Um, I'm holding it again in a beautiful buku bag. And I decided to participate in the uh, knit collage uh, Spring Cal. And uh, so I found out about this cal through the Caddy Jacks podcast. And uh, I really, I'm very intrigued by knit collage yarns. They produce really stunning hand spun yarns uh, that incorporate uh, different uh, textiles. So they have yarns that have uh, lace and uh, different embroidered bits and uh, lots of sparkle. They have very, very colorful yarns um, that I I find really, really charming and beautiful. Maybe not something I would necessarily wear, but they also have a lot of really gorgeous neutral yarns uh, that are kind of a little bit simpler, but all of their yarn, because it's hand spun, uh, it's, it's very chunky yarn and very textural and um, because it's handmade it's quite expensive and uh, I couldn't really with uh, with shipping costs right now because of COVID and with um, with the duties uh, I couldn't really afford to buy a kit. So the way the cow works is that you can uh, buy a kit and knit. They have certain designs that are part of the cow. There's, I don't know, maybe like six different designs that you can choose from. You purchase a kit and that kind of enters you into the cow. And so there is a huge, um, suite of videos that takes you through step by step for each pattern. Uh, there's also different Zoom calls and uh, online, you know, because of COVID and all that, uh, online gatherings. Uh, we had an amazing talk last weekend uh, by Stephen West, uh, which was like sort of a Cal exclusive and that was super fun. Um, anyway, the the Cal has a lot of um, a lot of really fun activities, and uh, there is an option where you can join the Cal and use your own yarn. So you're just basically doing the virtual version of the Cal. You uh, you don't have to buy a kit, and so that's the option that I opted for partly because of the cost but also because I had yarn in my stash that I thought would be perfect for a knit collage pattern. Uh, this is also a blue sky fiber uh, in their bulky base and uh, this is also very very old stash yarn. It's 50% alpaca, 50% wool and it's in this beautiful kind of pearly gray color. And the thing that clinched the cowl for me, uh, you know, apart from just how fun it sounded and, and uh, uh, Jackie and Caitlin have participated in several of the cowls now. And so every time it comes around, they talk about it and it just really sounds like a lot of fun. But uh, when I saw the design, there was one in particular that really caught my eye because, um, well, let me show it to you. It's called the Harley sweater. And here, here it is. It's 
it's a huge, uh, bulky <laughs> pullover in Entrelac. And yeah, this thing is going to be really amazing, really cozy. And uh, I'm f I can't wait to put this thing on. It'll be definitely a sweater for a super, super cold fall day. Um, maybe going going for a walk in, in the fields. But uh, I love the design. I, I had seen a sweater uh, probably on Pinterest and it was it was an, a large oversized uh, entrelac pullover in and I think it was in a cream color and I I remember just falling in love with that sweater and so when I saw the Harley I was like ooh I could make my own version of of a uh, of a crazy cozy entrelac uh, pullover so yeah, so it's it's knit in entrelac. So you're basically each of these uh, kind of woven looking bands are knit separately, and you're picking up stitches and then going you're going in different directions, and is super fun to do. Very very fast because the yarn is so thick. I'm using um, size seventeen or twelve millimeter needles. That's one thing I'm terrible at, and I apologize, is mentioning what needles I'm using. But anyway, there it is for this project. And I'm really I'm loving this. Like I said, it's, it's the kind of sweater I probably won't wear a ton because, you know, it's it's going to be, it's going to be so warm. And pretty heavy, you know, alpaca is a pretty heavy, um, heavy fiber and so <laughs> I suspect that this will be incredibly it'll be like wearing a puffy jacket basically um in terms of warmth and and that's that's great I think I think it'll just be a lot of fun to to wear and uh, beyond that just super fun to to knit and really really great to connect with a bunch of other knitters around the world and I've, I've really enjoyed doing this virtual uh, knit along. So I, uh, I highly recommend if you have been thinking of doing a knit collage uh, knit along, um, they have they have them, I think it's every spring and every fall. So, uh, so next fall, if, if, uh, if this piques your interest, I, I really do recommend it. It's, it's a ton of fun. So beyond knitting, I have been doing some spinning. Uh, I received some amazing spinning fiber that I just uh, was dying to uh, to start working with. Uh, these beautiful bats, I've got two to talk about. 
are uh, gorgeous fibers blended by Lindsay of Artifacts of Appreciation. I've talked about her before. She has a really great podcast called uh, Quarter Past. And uh, she does these incredible blends that um, that she sells. This this series was um, she was calling it uh, mystery sock bats. And so you would order the bat. You didn't know what you were getting, but uh, knowing Lindsay and knowing her work, I had a hundred percent confidence that I would love it. And of course. I absolutely do. It comes in these lovely uh, paper bag packages with uh, notes on what is exactly in here, like the, the fibers that were used. Uh, so in here, there's Southdown, Polworth, um, Navajo Churro, Icelandic, Baby Alpaca, and Masham. And she also lists the uh, who provided those fibers and so she blends them together and these stunning bats i will insert some b-roll of uh, a better view of the um, of the fiber so the other thing she includes is a, a smaller um, bump if you will of fiber for the uh, heels and toes in a contrasting color so look at how pretty that is i am so excited to spin some sock yarn with this beautiful fiber so i've started spinning it and it's glorious i'm working with my moosey spindle which is my favorite spindle i always um want to just work on that one even though I have other spindles and uh, it spins like a dream it's just the fiber just spins itself and I'm I'm so so enjoying using a spindle to spin this I really wanted to take my time with the fiber the colors are so subtle but there really are a lot of different colors there's some peach and some green and creams and grays and I find that if I spin with a spindle I can really um, see those colors it goes a lot slower and so I can really fully appreciate the fiber in all its glory so I'm completely in love with this and really enjoying doing some spindle spinning so that's uh, a, you know a, a, a bat that I purchased from Lindsay um, she also sent me a gift uh, a couple of weeks ago I received this other package in the in the mail and at first I thought Oh, she made a mistake. I didn't order this. But then I read what was on the bag. This is a podcast anniversary bat. So Lindsay created this bat of fat fiber to celebrate my, um, my podcast anniversary. And honestly, I didn't even realize that the anniversary was coming up until I got this and I saw the date April 16th 2016 is when I did my first episode and I mean Lindsay sent this to me as a gift to celebrate that and I cannot tell you how sweet and generous and amazing that is um, it is absolutely glorious a lot of charcoal and turquoise and this stunning moss green and creams I mean it's just so beautiful so thank you Lindsay I uh, yeah I'm blown away um, if you want to keep up with what Lindsay is up to and be notified when she has more of her amazing fiber available you can sign up for her newsletter I, I recommend you do that um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. And I uh, can't wait to show you more of this beautiful uh, fiber as I work with it. Well, I think that's going to be it for me today. <laughs> that was a lot. And now I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope 
that you enjoyed it and that you found uh, <laughs> all this stuff I showed uh, interesting. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here. Um, it really means a lot to me to have you uh, as part of my little fiber life. Um, I encourage you to like and subscribe, <laughs> as they say, uh, and especially uh, hit the, uh, the bell for notifications. Uh, if you're kind of a little frustrated that I don't um, I don't record very often and, and sort of you're tired of checking to see if I've put up a new episode. Um, if you hit the notification button, then you will be notified when I have a new episode up. Anyway, uh, take good care and we will talk to you soon, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Bye.